Trucking, a vital element in our interstate commerce system, transporting the food, resources, and goods used and produced in this country. The U.S. economy needs a productive trucking industry. At the same time, the public wants and deserves a safe highway transportation system. The constant desire to improve productivity means constant pressure to use bigger trucks. Bigger trucks mean heavier and longer trucks. In this video, we'll be investigating ways to ensure safety performance of bigger trucks so that both safety and productivity goals can be met simultaneously. Specifically, we'll be investigating basic resistance to rollover and emergency maneuverability and demonstrating procedures for gauging a vehicle's performance capabilities. The potential for rollover is a serious concern for all truckers. On the average, large trucks are only about one-third as stable as passenger cars. The most important determinant in the basic roll stability of a truck is the height of its center of gravity or the height of its load. Generally speaking, the higher the load, the easier it is for a truck to roll over. When weight is increased in trucks, it is usually added on top of the other cargo. Higher weight generally leads to higher centers of gravity and thus less roll stability. To demonstrate the importance of the height of the load, we have equipped this tractor semi-trailer with anti-rollover outriggers and an adjustable height load rack. The outriggers will prevent an actual rollover when the stability limit of the vehicle is exceeded. Inside the trailer, the load rack is loaded with iron blocks. The blocks, together with the hardware, simulate a payload of 25,000 pounds. By adjusting the height of the load rack, the center of gravity can be adjusted from just above the load floor to higher up in the trailer. Yellow and black markers on the outside of the trailer indicate the height of center of gravity. Comparison of the effect of high and low load is done by driving the vehicle through a 150-foot radius turn at 30 miles per hour. This is similar to turning off a freeway onto a rather tight exit ramp. With the load located fairly low in the trailer, our test vehicle is stable as it runs through this test. But when the load is to about the midpoint of the trailer, the roll stability of the vehicle is lower. This same maneuver results in a simulated rollover with a vehicle rolling up onto the outriggers. Turning tests at approving grounds are one way to determine the basic roll stability of trucks. Another more controlled way is to use a tilt table. In a tilt table test, a fully loaded commercial truck is mounted on a device which can roll the truck sideways. The tilt angle of the table is slowly increased until the truck rolls over. Actual rollover is prevented by restraint straps on the wheels. The tilt table test is simpler, less expensive, and a more precise means of measuring basic roll stability than proving grounds testing. Since the tractor and the trailers are manufactured and sold separately, they're often interchanged in large trucking operations. Therefore, their stability properties need to be determined separately. To test the tractor separately, it is equipped with an adjustable load rack which simulates the influence of a representative trailer. Different loads can be used to cover different classes of trailers. Trailers can be tested separately using a special device that provides the appropriate stabilizing influence of the tractor suspension. Using these methods, tractors and trailers can be matched to form complete vehicles which would have the specified level of basic roll stability. Multiple trailer vehicles are an important and productive part of the trucking industry. And while rollover is a potential problem for all trucks, trucks with two or more trailers may have special stability problems. Doubles, which are currently used nationwide, provide a flexible, efficient, high-volume vehicle for moving low-density freight. Triple trailer units could enhance the productivity of these trucks by 50%. Using triples instead of doubles means two drivers can do the work of three, and only two tractors are needed where three are now required. 
The potential savings in labor, fuel, and capital cost, which could be realized by using triples, are obvious. But it is known that the stability of multiple trailer vehicles can decrease significantly with each additional trailer. In normal highway driving, doubles and triples generally behave well. However, even under the best circumstances, the rear trailer sometimes has a tendency to wander. Although this may be unnerving for motorists, normal maneuvering is not the real problem. The real problem becomes readily apparent when the driver must make an unanticipated quick maneuver, the kind he'll make when something unexpected happens on the road in front of him. Researchers have been studying this issue for several years. Based on their work, accurate predictions of vehicle behavior can now be made using computers. Predicted behavior can be readily evaluated using computer-generated graphics as seen here. This tendency for the rear trailer to snake or sway in quick, evasive maneuvers can lead to excessive rear trailer motions and thus to rollover. This behavior has been compared to cracking the whip. Researchers call it rearward amplification. That is, the rear trailers each amplify the steering motion made by the driver. Studies have shown that rearward amplification is a contributing factor in a significant number of accidents involving multi-trailer rigs. The engineering analyses and computer predictions of rearward amplification have been confirmed by proving grounds tests. Test procedures have been developed to accurately measure a vehicle's tendency toward rearward amplification. This test course was developed as a simple but effective means of measuring rearward amplification response. The course simulates an evasive maneuver. The vehicle is required to move over 4 feet 10 inches, less than half of a lane width. But this must be accomplished in only 210 feet. At 55 miles per hour, the tractor completes this maneuver in two and a half seconds. When the multiple trailer does this maneuver, the rear trailer responds by overshooting the lane. By placing a limit on the amount of overshoot, rearward amplification can be limited. Here, our evasive maneuver is performed with just a single trailer, a rather mild maneuver for this vehicle. Here, it is performed with two trailers, as we've seen before. Some swaying of the second trailer is apparent. When a third trailer is added and the same maneuver is attempted, the third trailer's steering input comes from the second trailer, whose motions are already amplified. The third trailer amplifies the motion still more, and the result can be very severe. In this maneuver, the third trailer would roll over if it wasn't for the outrigger. The so-called converter dolly is an important part of the vehicle in determining rearward amplification performance. Just as the rear of the tractor supports the first trailer, the dolly supports the front of the second or third trailer. Today's standard dolly, the A dolly, has a single point drawbar that connects to the towing trailer at a pental hitch. The hardware is simple and convenient. However, the freely pivoting hitch helps create the rearward amplification problem. The C dolly has two rigid drawbars which both connect to the rear of the lead trailer. This arrangement eliminates steer rotation at this hitch point and substantially adds to the stability of the vehicle. To make up for the steering action lost by adding the second drawbar, the wheels of the C dolly are allowed to steer, but with some constraint. The dolly axle is equipped with a special mechanism to provide enough steering control for stability, but enough freedom for efficient operation. Analysis shows that the C dolly concept does reduce rearward amplification. When our test track maneuver is repeated with a triple trailer rig using C dollies, the performance improvement is dramatic. Both nationwide and provincial regulatory policy in Canada promote the use of C dollies. Norm Burns of the Saskatchewan Department of Transportation and Highways explains. We've been running uh, C-trains in Saskatchewan since about 1980. 
Uh, at the present time, carriers have a number of alternatives uh, open to them to run this configuration. Uh, they are allowed to operate them under normal legal weight and dimension regulation. We also have two permit programs. In the one case, carriers can take legal length vehicles, and uh, if they upgrade the dolly to meet uh, the specifications that were recommended by the National Research Council, uh, the Department of Highways and Transportation will issue them a permit that will increase their payload by 7,000 kilograms. We also have another program. Uh, we call it our overlength vehicle program. It's really uh, uh, a program whereby carriers operate vehicles that exceed the, the legal 25 meter length limit. And uh, we issue permits for triple trailers and Rocky Mountain doubles uh, for lengths up to uh, uh, 36 meters, uh, provided they use dollies that meet the same specification. <coughs> On a national basis, uh, some time ago, all of the provinces signed an agreement that would, in principle, permit the use of sea trains in their particular jurisdiction. Transport Canada, the national regulatory body, is in the process of uh, developing regulations that uh, will uh, come into being some 12 to 18 months in the future. 18 to 24 months from now, uh, you'll probably see uh, most jurisdictions in Canada uh, permitting sea trains to operate. I think the bottom line uh, with regard to uh, operating sea trains uh, safely and uh, I guess uh, getting the desired performance out of them, uh, one must uh, take care to design uh, uh, the dolly converter correctly. Uh, I think it's a matter of training drivers to operate them properly and uh, I think the unit as well, including the dolly converter, has to be maintained and, and uh, operated correctly throughout its service life. I think if you do things, uh, uh, you can realize a significant improvement in, in vehicle performance over what a single hook uh, A dolly will provide. This policy seems to work well in Canada. Mr. August Arndt, the man responsible for Sears' fleet of triples, talked about Sears' experience with sea dollies. Sears runs triple trailer combinations, overlength combinations, primarily for economy. Uh, we use 27-foot trailers almost exclusively, and by the using the third trailer for a very small additional expense, we move 50% more product. And to us, that's vital because we're an expense department, we have no revenue, so wherever we can cut expenses, the bottom line is to save buck and do the job. Um, we use the sea dollies with the triple combinations, of course, because of regulation, but since that time we have gone to them because we prefer them because of safety and the versatility of them, actually, and uh, we think that they're a far better unit than the single hook A dolly. Sears uh, did use A dolly or the single hook dolly ex exclusively prior to the advent of the triple trailer combination or the overlength combinations at which time we were obliged to start with the C dolly and at that time we discovered the virtues of the C dolly as compared to the A dolly and consequently we have moved and our philosophy is to move entirely to C dollies uh, even though we could run the A dolly on a double combination but because of the stability, the safety, the steering, all those good things we feel that the C dolly is head and shoulders above the A dolly, and we are moving toward that uh, very quickly. In fact, uh, in short order, we will be out of A dollies, and we'll only use C dollies. To illustrate the uh, safety of the triple combinations that Sears has operated in Western Canada, I'd like to share some figures with you. Uh, annually, we travel approximately in excess of a half a million miles every year, and uh, we have operated triples approximately 10 years now. So we have traveled somewhere between 5 and 10 million miles, and I might add, safely without one accident. These stories are typical. Drivers and companies who began using sea dollies under regulatory encouragement find that they would use them even without regulation. 
In the U.S., regulations encouraging sea dollies do not yet exist. Nevertheless, because of their obvious safety advantages, sea dollies are beginning to catch on in the U.S. without regulatory encouragement. Users like Jim Hand of Noel Transport are very enthusiastic. We purchased the sea dolly. We started using it about three years ago. We purchased it, purchased it primarily for the, for the safety aspect of it because we're a self-insured company and uh, the safety of it uh, is primarily the reason we've done it. Uh, we have experienced several accidents between here and Spokane in the wintertime in icy conditions and since we have gotten the, the dolly we have, uh, haven't had an a accident that we could lay to the dolly or the, the trailer whipping. We run approximately about six sets of doubles out of our operation a night. Uh, in the transition period, uh, we had approximately three sets with the new Super C dolly and three sets with your standard conventional dolly. In our transition period, the drivers were very apprehensive about switching to the new Super C dolly. And now, as they've gotten used to them, we can't get them off of them. It's, everybody knows that a driver is very negative uh, about going to anything new. and. Uh, Normally, it takes less than a half a trip to convince them that this dolly is the, uh, 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 the wave of the future. Major U.S. equipment manufacturers are also starting to consider the sea dolly. Early sea dolly users had to use hitches designed for the A dolly. Now, hardware specifically designed to fit the needs of the sea dolly is becoming available. Consequently, early complaints of hitching difficulty are fading. Sea dollies offer other advantages, too. Maneuvering in the tight confines of loading yards is improved. Sea dollies also make it possible to back up multiple trailer rigs, something that just isn't possible with A dollars. Many trucking companies who have worked with the Sea Dolly feel it should become the industry standard. Safety, productivity, efficiency. These are the issues that face the U.S. trucking industry today as it considers bigger vehicles. To date, research has established appropriate methods for measuring the brake roll stability and rearward amplification of commercial vehicles and new technology has given us the means to improve these two performance qualities. The capability exists to have both higher productivity and enhanced safety tomorrow, if the right choices are made today.